this gentleman sitting behind you? That's Pam. Who is this gentleman right here? Yeah. Too. Hi. Sorry. I'm, I'm Pam. Me. I'm Dale. Nice to meet you, Pam. Nice to. Pam. Um, Pam. I'm Brennan's stepbrother. I'm here for moral support. And if another job pops open while we're sitting here, guess what? I got my catcher's mitt out, and right. I'm ready to. Jump in. Put me in, Coach. I'm ready to play. Okay. Well, Dale, unfortunately, there isn't another job available. Just you don't know one. that. I actually, I do. I, I, I work here. Oh. At what Street. if someone just quit down the hall? Uh, wait. Here they. I can hear their footsteps. Oh. Uh, another look, job. There isn't another position available. Okay. Getting a job, and that's the theme for this week's the weekly strategy memo. I'm Rich Taft, the president of RLT Strategies, and each week I answer a question from a world-changing leader. And uh, last week we had a question about finding a job in this very difficult economy. And this is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, go back and watch part one. This is part two. Last week we focused on the unique and remarkable things about you that you need to know in the job search. This week we're going to do some focusing, focusing on some key hints that could help you actually land the job. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is that we start with imagining. Imagine the exact job that you want. Now again, I know people are listening to this and saying, in a bad economy, you don't imagine the job, you take what you get. I completely disagree. Imagine the job you want. Realize that everything that you experience in the world has been created twice. It was once imagined in someone's imagination and then it was created. Whether it's the camera I'm looking at now or the computer you're looking at, the clothes that I'm wearing, everything was imagined once. So you need to imagine the job that you want to have first. This will help you be very specific in the search that you're looking for. It also creates an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself at this key time. I'm an unusual person in that I've never had a job that existed before I had it. That means, in some sense, I've invented every job I've had. You could reinvent yourself at this time, this key moment, too. Imagination is going to be the key. It'll really help you with the next steps. The next step, obviously, in getting a job would be networking. I have a politically incorrect expression that I often use with my clients, which is, know your mafia. And by your mafia, that's the group beyond your family and friends that you're connected to, and you may have never met them. But because of they might share your faith, they might share your political outlook, they might belong to a unique organization that you're a member of, whatever it is, it even could be your school, your local community. Whatever that little factor about you is, it's a little quirky, a little unusual, it's a group that you have high intensity in belonging to, that group will pick up the phone for you, that person out there will respond to your email, and could be the key to you finding a job. Realize that many jobs that you're looking at have already been filled before they've been posted. So don't be daunted by the fact that when you're coming in, you may be actually looking for a different job that doesn't even exist yet. But having that key network will get you into the key meetings and build relationships with people you may not even know. So know your mafia when you're networking. If you've done your imagination work ahead of time, you'll be very specific with their time. Do not waste your network's time. Do not say to them, I need a job. I'm looking for a job that pays 60 k Tell them exactly what you want because they cannot help you. And you are wasting your time if you give vague direction on yourself. So... Now you've imagined it, you've engaged your network, you're going to not need to have a resume, some document. Very quickly, there's a million books on how to write a resume. I'm going to give a couple observations, having reviewed thousands of them for job applicants. One, I found a correlation. The more insecure or younger a candidate is, the longer their resume. The more confident and successful the person is, the shorter the resume, generally. Keep it short, cut out the fat, get to the point, be specific. and at the end, when it asks for hobbies or you put something unique about yourself, don't miss that opportunity to mention something about your unique organizations. Sometimes people read through it and I get to that end and they say, oh, you're into fencing? I'm into fencing. Who knows? Some odd little quirk about yourself could be very interesting to an interviewer. So do throw that in at the end of the resume. The resume should be results-oriented. Do not use process sentences. Don't tell me, manage people from 1985 to 1992. Boring. Tell me the results you got. Managed five people. Increased productivity with those five people of 600% over last year's numbers. Write it like a math equation. If I was going to apply for a job, would you be more interested to hear that I've worked with nonprofits or that the organizations I've worked with have had a 10 to 1 return on investment by working with me? Numbers speak to results. 
people pay for results, they hire results. They do not hire process. So your resume should speak to results. Now, you've got that all lined up and you need to get to the next level. The next level is actually the interview itself. Again, many books written on the topic. I'm going to share one key thing that I think you should do in an interview. Be honest. What I'm looking for when I'm interviewing for a job for somebody who's trying to uh, get a job is I'm looking for their moral character. You can teach things and content, but if I find the person exaggerating their resume, insecure, and therefore feeling the need to bolster things, I'm not going to hire them. I wouldn't hire them, and I think that's the key thing. Most people get hung up in nervousness, try to expand things a little bit better, don't quite tell the truth, hoping to gloss over things. Tell the truth. You don't have to tell the awful truth, but you can tell the truth. Don't lie. Don't change the facts. Don't be negative about where you've worked before. Keep it all positive, but keep it honest. Take a little time and prep with a friend or a coach and Google yourself. You might find things on the internet. Those questions could come up about you. So be prepared. Don't be stunned that someone's Googled you before the interview. People do it all the time. So now that you've gone through the interview, the last step is an old expression about job hunting, that finding a job is your job, I couldn't agree with that more. This is often the toughest part for people who find themselves in a job search. People tell me all the time, I don't know how you work for yourself, I could never do it, I have to work for somebody else. I get that because working for yourself requires a certain degree of accountability and, and discipline. But if you're unemployed, guess what? You're working for yourself, whether you like it or not. And this is about your future, so you should be very invested. So treat it like a job. Set up a schedule at the beginning of the week. Create an accountability partner, someone who you're telling what you're doing to get things done. Very often clients say to me, well, I'm out of work and I'm going to use these next three weeks as a little vacation that I had never got. Sounds like a good idea. I completely disagree. Take your vacation on your employer's dime, not when you're out of work. Every day that you're putting off getting the job that you love, your options get narrower and narrower as your funds drop or your unemployment drops or your situation changes. So you'll have so be proactive at the beginning. Be proactive at the beginning of your job search. Take it seriously. This is your job. With these strategy tips, I hope, I hope that you will stand out above the crowd. You've had the advantage of some strategic thinking about this process. I'd love your feedback on this, so get back to me and tell me if it's what's useful and what you disagree with. I'd love any feedback. This is Rich Tapple with the Weekly Strategy Memo. Thanks for watching.